statistical analysis by a computer is carried out by multiplying and doing other operations on matrices. What do you need to understand about matrices if you're an applied researcher and why? There are two reasons why understanding matrices is useful. The first reason is that once you go beyond very basic books or basic analysis things in your software, you will encounter equations like that. So uh, most econometric texts, many texts on structural equation modeling and for example state as user manual once you go beyond basic techniques uh, they switch to matrices because presenting um, complex models is a lot more you uh, lot easier in this format and also it's easier to understand the ideas once you know what all this notation here means. So you need to be able to understand matrices to understand what you read and um, the equations sometimes express the idea a lot better than the words if you understand what the equation is about. So this is the, uh, the estimation criteria for generalized method and moments estimator and uh, we need to understand what all this stuff is about. So this is basically a matrix weighted sum of, of uh, squares covariances, something like that. Then the second reason is that sometimes being able to do simple calculations with matrices is useful. For example, if you want to uh, calculate the model implied covariance and your software does not provide it for you, you can just multiply matrices together and then you will get that covariance matrix that you need. Also, if you uh, need to convince your reviewers that your analysis approach actually uh, is not sensitive to violations of some assumptions, understanding matrices can be useful if you end up doing a small simulation study. And finally, while you don't need to uh, do very advanced matrix operations, sometimes uh, just putting matrices together and or taking sums of matrices is useful when you export your results from a statistical software for reproducibility. So exporting uh, things should always be done programmatically instead of copy paste and matrices can be helpful in, in some instances when you export the data. Let's take a look at what matrices are and, and what kind of calculations we can do with matrices. So matrix is basically a, a two by two array of numbers and it can be contrasted with scholars which are single numbers. So scholar we usually mark with a, a letter that is not bolded and its lower case is just a single number and then if we have a, a bolded number lower case that is a vector which is basically a matrix which is only one column or one row. So matrix has m columns and n rows. We always say that uh, the m is the rows and n is the column. So you always first say the row number and then the column number. If the um, m and n number of rows and number of columns are the same then it's called a square matrix. And uh, if it's a square matrix then it has a diagonal. So diagonal are the elements that are kind of like go uh, from, from the top corner to the bottom corner and uh, those are kind of like in the middle of the matrix here. So that's the diagonal. And then we have two other special areas in this matrix. We have the lower triangle here and usually correlation matrices in articles are lower, lower triangle and sometimes uh, for example reliability information is in diagonal or it can be just all ones because a variable correlates with itself at one and then upper triangle is typically left empty in a typical correlation matrix. So these are the basic elements of, of, of a matrix that is um, square and if the lower triangle or upper triangle are the same it's called a symmetric matrix. For example a correlation matrix is a symmetric matrix because if, if x correlates with y at point three then y correlates with x at point three as well and uh, typically when we print out uh, symmetric matrices, we just print out the lower uh, triangle and possibly the diagonal here. So this is the, the basic of, of basics of, of matrices. There are two uh, special kind of matrices that you should know. One is the, uh, the diagonal matrix, which has entries only on the diagonal. All off-diagonal entries are, are zeros. And uh, this, is, uh, this expression is useful, for example, if you want to um, uh, present uncorrelated variables. So if you have like, a, let's say, random effects model and you want to uh, 
have uh, random effects that are uncorrelated or you have independent observations then uh, we would have for example independent observations in regression analysis then we would say that our error covariance matrix is, is diagonal so the co errors don't correlate between observations and then we have identity matrices all once an identity matrix uh, basically corresponds to the number one in, in um, scholars. So if we multiply a number with one, then we will get one, uh, the original number. If we multiply matrix with an identity matrix, we will get the original matrix as a product. So these are, these are the kind of matrices that, that we'll be dealing with in our econometrics books and in uh, applied analysis. Let's take a look at some useful operations that you know. There are of course lots of matrix operations, lots of functions that you can apply to matrices, but there are only just these that you need to know to understand the basics. And uh, knowing the determinant is only uh, required because that is basically uh, the equivalent of, of zero and, and uh, you need to know that you can't divide with zero. So uh, checking the determinant for whether some core some calculations are possible or not that can be useful so that's basically checking if your divisor is, is zero this is the same as checking if determinant equals zero transpose additional multiplication and inverse so that's that's the things that you need to know that's basically a plus and minus addition multiplication product and uh, inverse is division so basic basic math skills let's take a look at what these what the transpose is first so transpose takes an existing matrix and, and flips it so that the rows become columns and the columns become rows. And uh, we use the prime symbol here to indicate that it's a transpose. And uh, why we use transpose is, is that when you, uh, when you add matrices together or when, they when you multiply matrices together, they need to be uh, of certain, certain form. So for example, if you are uh, these two matrices cannot be added together. So you can't add A and A prime because adding matrices together requires that they have the same column count and same row count. And uh, we, we would need to transpose this again to make the, it possible to take sums of these. So transposition on a basic level, you can, uh, it can be understood that it's, it's like a convenient convenience operator. So when your matrices are, are not structure the right way you can flip them so that they are and calculations become possible and there is a on the basic level you don't need to understand transposes any further than that. Then um, let's go to the actual operations. So matrix uh, addition is simply calculating all the, uh, the, the numbers together. So if A and B have the same dimensions and you take a sum then the resulting matrix will contain uh, the sums of each element of A with uh, each element of B. So the first element of, of A plus B is going to be uh, the first element of A plus first element of B and that, that's, that's there, what there is to it. Let's take a look at the example in, in Stata and uh, here we define A which is a, a two by two matrix. We print it out to see that it is a two by two, two rows, two columns and uh, then we can uh, sum generate matrix B as a sum of matrix and A plus matrix A and print out so we can see that uh, the first number here 2 is 1 plus 1 and so on. We can also see that uh, calculating or uh, taking adding certain kind of matrices together is not possible if we define a matrix C containing 1 and 2 so that's actually a vector and it's uh, it's called a, a row vector because it has a uh, one row and no col and, and uh, or column ve row vector because it has uh, just one row and there there you have it you can't add a 1 by 2 matrix to a 2 by 2 matrix because they don't have the same dimensions and you would get a conformability error so conformability error means that uh, the matrices are not compatible for the operation that you want to carry out. That can sometimes happen and then uh, it's useful to print out and check if they actually have the same dimensions. So that's, that's the mat matrix addition and that's fairly fairly simple operation. Taking products of matrices is uh, a bit more complicated but it is also a very very useful thing to know. So this is how Woolridge explains matrix multiplication and uh, he is basically uh, telling this in a very condensed way but let's let's take a, a step by step 
approach what matrix multiplication is. So it, it involves doing something with, with uh, rows and columns and then uh, multiplying elements together and taking a sum. But to understand, let's first look at matrix dimensions. So uh, let's assume that we have a 3 by 2 matrix and 2 by 3 matrix that we want to multiply together. The first thing we need to understand is that not all matrices can be multiplied. Uh, you, you can't take add all matrices together. If your matrices are of different size, they can be added. In matrix multiplication, what is required is that the first matrix, the column count must equal the row count of the second matrix. So these first numbers must be the same and uh, all these like inner numbers and the outer numbers, they will be the dimensions of the new matrix. So when we multiply these two matrices together, we get a three by three matrix. And so it has nine different cells. We go from six cells and six cells to nine cells. And then how do we populate the cells? Well, we'll, uh, we'll go row by row and column by column. So we'll first take the first row of the first matrix and first column of the second matrix, like so. And we start looking at, at the numbers. So we'll take the first number of the first row and the first number of the first column. We multiply them together and we add that to our, our, our matrix here. So that comes here to the first element. And then we, uh, we proceed to the, uh, the second column of the first row and uh, second row of the first column in the second matrix. We multiply together and we add here. So this is, uh, this is sums of products. So we get sums of products of each element of the focal row and the focal column. In this case, we have just, um, just uh, two elements because this has two rows and this one has two columns. The, the second column, we just uh, shift to the second column of the second matrix. So that populates the second column. We do the same calculation and, and we use the first row from the first matrix and second column from the second matrix that gives us the content and, and we go on like that for, for this, this full matrix. So, so why would this be useful? And uh, if, you, if you had to calculate all these things by hand, it would take a long time. And let's, let's take a look at an application in, in where this is actually a useful thing to, to be able to do. So here is a, a simultaneous equations model. So we have two dependent variables, y1 and y2, and we have two predictors x1 and x2. And uh, this is the, uh, the model in matrix format. So we have y is the y matrix, the dependent variable values. x is the x matrix, uh, the, the independent variable values. Beta is the matrix of regression coefficients and, and u is a matrix of error term values. So the xb gives the, uh, the predictive values and uh, or x beta depending on which, uh, no, which way you write this second matrix. And uh, this is the reason why status predict command has the default option xb when you want to do fitted values. So it's uh, x matrix, the data matrix multiplied by the regression coefficient vector or, or matrix if you have multiple equation models. Let's take a look at how this, um, then how we calculate the model implied correlations between x's and y's. Well, it is simply covariance between x and y equals covariance matrix of x multiplied by beta. And, and how is that? Why is that the case? If we start looking at how the numbers work, let's write out the covariances. So the covariance matrix of x is symmetric. We have variance of x, variance of uh, x1, and then these, these uh, covariances on, on the, uh, in the corners. Uh, the upper, di upper triangle is covariance and lower triangle is the same covariance. So this is a symmetric matrix. Then we have the regression coefficient matrix here and we multiply these together. It gives us this kind of matrix. So in which way is this a covariance matrix? Well, we can take a look at, we have the covariance between x1 and y is here in the first cell, x y2 and x1 is here, and then the covariance between y's and x2's are on the second row. And if you want to verify that you actually get the same results by applying the path analysis tracing rules, you're free to do so, but this is just a much more convenient way of calculating these model implied covariances than, than trying to do this by hand or even doing it by Excel, because this just gives us, we just uh, tell our statistical software to multiply x with betas and that gives us the covariances instead of having to, uh, to do this uh, 
manual calculations, taking all possible paths, multiplying things uh, along the path and taking a sum of those paths and then doing that for four times for each covariance. This is just a lot more convenient way of doing it. Okay, so that is the basic of, of our product. And now t let's take a look at, at matrix inverse. So matrix inverse is kind of like the same as, as dividing with the scalar. So this is the inverse. The uh, idea with inverse in, in scalars is that if we have a divided by b, that is the same as multiplying a with 1 divided by b, which is the inverse of b. And uh, we can also write a divided by b as, as a to the uh, times b minus 1, which is the inverse of b. And uh, for scalars, if we have a number and we, we divide the number with itself, we get 1. In matrices, uh, the inverse is, is kind of like dividing. So if we uh, multiply A by its inverse, we get the identity matrix. So identity matrix is, is roughly the same as 1 in scalars. And uh, so this is, uh, we can, uh, if we have A times B and we want to understand what A is, then we would multiply uh, both sides of an equation with uh, the inverse of, of beta or B. Let's take a look at an example on, on how inverses could be useful and how we can use what we just learned to understand the regression analysis in, in matrix form. So this is uh, again from Woolridge. Uh, there is an appendix about regression analysis and how it's calculated in matrix form. So we'll be taking a look at this regression model here. So y is, is x beta plus u, so beta smaller. Uh, lower case because this is a uh, uh, one regression model only. So this is not the system of equations. So we have just one set of regression coefficients. X is the data matrix and U is the matrix of error term values or vector of error term values. It is a vector because we have just one error term and we have values for each case. Y is a vector because we have just one dependent variable. It has values for, for each observation. So let's take a look at what these equations mean. So that's the model. And uh, then Woolridge explains that uh, gives these two equations. These are actually uh, two ways of understanding the OLS estimation criterion. And uh, how do we know what, what is the meaning of, of this, this equation here? What's the meaning of that equation here? We need to first understand what is this x prime x. So uh, data matrix multiply it by its inverse and that's called the cross product matrix. So what is the meaning of this cross product matrix? Once you, we understand that, then it becomes much easier to understand what these equations actually tell us. So the cross product matrix is here and uh, we, we have uh, the data matrix. So we have uh, k variables and n observations. The first one is transposed. So normally we have the observations on rows like you have in Excel or, or in you know, statistical software and the, the variables on columns. But this is transposed so the, uh, the observations are on columns and then uh, variables are on rows. And then we have the original matrix which is uh, k variables and n observations. So we need to first think about before we think of what's the meaning of the uh, cross product matrix x prime x we need to understand the dimensions. So this produces a matrix that is uh, k by k. So uh, if we have five variables, it's going to be a five by five matrix. And we take uh, products of, of each va value. So product of, of the value for the first case plus times the product, pr the value of the first case times the value of the first case plus the value of the first case times the second case times the value of the second case plus the value of the third case times the value of the third case and so on. So this is uh, kind of like sum of squares, right? Sum of squares for that variable. And I'm going to simplify the math a bit. And we're going to assume that all these variables have means of zeros. And this just makes the math a bit easier. It doesn't affect the basic idea at all. So uh, let's, let's take a look at at how, what this actually means. So that's the cross product matrix and we can start calculating and it's convenient to write x1i as like, like so. So we have x1 minus x1 bar, the mean of x1 
plus x1 bar the mean of x1. So we subtract the mean and we add the mean. That will not change, change this, this variable at all, but uh, we'll come to a convenient conclusion if we do it so. So we, we add, mu subtract mean and we add mean again. We can write out the product and uh, from here these uh, two lines actually cancel out because this is sum of all values of, of all sum over all n and uh, a mean centered variable and the mean are uncorrelated so their sum over all observations is going to be zero. So these, these cancel out and, uh, and that's also because this, this is a mean of zero, the mean centered value. Those cancel out and then uh, this is going to be zero because we uh, decided that our variables will be uncorrelated, will be uh, mean centered. So we'll just simplify the math a bit. So we're left with the, this stuff here and uh, if we divide this by n minus 1 and then multiply by n minus 1 again we can see that this is actually this is covariance times sample size minus 1. So uh, when we have a cross product matrix this matrix is actually uh, a scaled version of the covariance matrix. So, so how does that help us to understand these equations here. All right, so, so we know that this is a, a scaled version of the covariance matrix and that we know that much. Let's take a look at the, what the other stuff here are. So we know that uh, the data matrix times the regression coefficients that give us the fitted values. So that's the fitted values. The observed values minus the fitted values is the residuals or, or the error term because uh, the, this is the residuals because this is an estimate and uh, then we uh, take a, a product of the residuals, a matrix product with the residuals and uh, the data matrix. This is uh, the covariances between X and, and E or covariance between uh, the residuals and the error term and we set those to be zeros. So this, this uh, equation E6, the idea here is that we have the residuals and we set them to be uncorrelated with the explanatory variables. And uh, this is uh, like every correlation between every explanatory variable and the residual is, is zero. And we can express all those correlations uh, or covariances using this one simple line. So this is a, a very compact way of expressing this idea. So quite often when you, when you multiply two sets of observed values or you multiply observed values and error terms, what you get is a scaled version of the covariance matrix. So what's the, uh, what, what's the meaning of this uh, equation here? Well, uh, x uh, prime x times the regression coefficients uh, is simply the model implied var covariances and uh, x prime y can be understood as the actual observed covariances. So we can set the implied covariances to be the same as observed covariances and that gives us the least squares results. So this uh, is a very compact way of, of explaining regression analysis. Well, regression is not that complicated. So if you were to write down this as, as equations, like the matrix content as well, you would still end up with fairly understandable book. But if you go to more complicated models, then trying to write out the individual equations without matrices is actually uh, pretty hard and understanding the basic ideas is a lot easier from the matrices if you understand what the matrices mean. So how do we do OLS estimation then? Well, one way to calculate the OLS estimates and this is actually the way that your computer applies is to, uh, to use this equation. So how do we get from this equation? How do we get this equation? Well, we get it by multiplying both sides of equation 7 with the inverse of x prime x and uh, multiplying by inverse is basically the same as, as dividing. So we, we just uh, kind of like divide this uh, x prime x beta with x prime x and it gives us, us the, the regression coefficients. So inverse is kind of like division and uh, sometimes when you uh, get an error message that the matrix is not invertible then it means that uh, this, this calculation here fails so you can divide. And we'll take a look at what a non-invertible matrix would mean in this context.
So this is the actual the, uh, the equation that your computer uses for the calculation. So computer does not minimize sum of squares. It applies this matrix equation because it's a lot faster than trying to uh, calculate the residuals and take their squares and try to minimize that using some optimization algorithm. No, that's what the computer does for you. Now, this can go wrong if there are the inverse cannot be found and uh, to understand when inverses don't exist we need to understand the determinant and this is probably uh, beyond trying to uh, to multiply two matrices that don't have compatible dimensions this is probably the most common problem that researchers can face so what is the determinant we can first take a look at scalar so uh, every number, we have the number line, so we have a zero point, we have negative numbers, we have positive numbers, and we have value 1.5, and the value 1.9 basically gives us a distance. So 1.5, that's the distance from zero, and uh, zero is an important point because you cannot divide with zero. So we know that from high school math, dividing by zero is not possible. So how does this apply to matrices? Let's take a look at an example matrix. So our matrix is, is uh, this one, two, three, two, and uh, the matrix can be understood uh, geometrically. So we can understood that this, understand that this matrix is, is uh, two vectors. So we have the first column and the second column, and the first row gives the x values, and the second column gives the y values. So we can, we can actually uh, plot this coordinate system and then uh, plot the first vector here, so it goes up and right. And the second vector goes up and right, but with a different angle. So that's our two vectors uh, that this uh, form this matrix. And uh, we can then plot the, uh, the vectors so that they again, so that they start from the end point of each other, and we get this kind of geometric shape. And this shape has an area, so we can uh, uh, that area can be understood as, as the size of this matrix, the same way that distance from zero can be understood as the size of the number. And if this, this as size of the matrix is zero, then you can't divide or you can't invert that matrix. And this size is given by the determinant. So the area here is the determinant. If this determinant is zero, then we can't invert the matrix. So we can't do uh, divisions with that matrix. And when, the deter when is the determinant zero? It is zero when both these vectors go to the same di direction. For example, uh, here we have one, two and two, four. They go to the same direction, so the area is going to be zero. And uh, this, uh, if they go to the same direction, it means that there is a linear dependency between the columns. So we can say that one column is just a product of another column. And this is uh, the violation of the third regression assumption. And uh, so that would uh, lead to a determinant that is zero. So a uh, uh, determinant of zero basically means that you have uh, something that if you try to divide with is equivalent to dividing with a zero and that can be done. So what you need to understand is the general concept of matrices. It is um, has rows and columns and then there are numbers. And there are just a few operations that you need to know transpose for convenience if two matrices can be, can be multiplied together maybe if you transpose one maybe after that they can the same thing about adding together if you can't add together maybe transposing one would help or if you have a, if you want to have a, 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 a matrix that contains first the standard deviations means and then correlations maybe you need to transpose the standard deviation and, core, uh, and mean vectors first before you can join them with the correlation matrix to make them the right shape. Then addition and multiplication and inverse are the basic operations that's like plus and minus, uh, product and division and determinant is useful to understand because that tells you when you can apply inverse or divide if you like to think about it that way.